I would like to share a story with you. My friend Harshal has hemophilia, a condition in which blood does not clot normally. While Harshal was having his breakfast, he cut his finger. As he was about to leave for a meeting, he decided to use a piece of cloth to tie the wound and leave. But it was bleeding heavily and he had to change this piece of cloth many times. One can imagine the pain that Harshal went through. If I tell you that you have to experience the same pain for four continuous days every month, technically half of your life. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. How many of you know and understand the meaning of this word, menstruation? Anyone? Great, we have a good number here. How many men here have been to a store to buy a sanitary napkin or have seen it in reality? Few of them. How many of you know what are menstrual cup? <laughs> no one. Well. Okay. Friends, if this is the awareness that majority and more than half of the audience are unaware about menstrual hygiene. And in a city which is metropolitan and urban, the one which you are standing. One can imagine what might be happening in the 61% of the population which stays in rural areas. We can understand the awareness and the unawareness which is there. Of course, I had no relation to menstruation until 2011 when I visited Assam to have a closer look to the school of my friend Tapan. He was working with underprivileged children and helping people who are economically disadvantaged. Coming from Pune, it was actually an eye-opener for me, where I saw superstitions impacting the health of females. And this one incident I never thought would change my life. It was a turning point. While we were interacting with the people meeting them, trying to know their perspective, trying to understand their problems, I met this young girl who was weaving a silk sari on a handloom. I asked her a simple question, which school do you go to? She said, I don't go to a school. I asked why? She replied, because I am cursed by God, and that's the reason I don't go to a school. I was confused, cursed by God? So I directed the same question to her father. He said, in our community, girls are not sent to school because they are cursed by gods with menstrual periods. This is just a tip of the iceberg. Majority of the women in our country use old rags as a protection and to soak blood. Many of the women do not have the best hygiene practices. Many of them if we go by the stats, 70% still use old cloth as a sanitary protection. They reuse it, wash it. But due to this awkwardness to dry it in open, they dry it indoors. And due to which the cloth doesn't dry properly. And when they reuse, it creates infection in the urinary tract. One can imagine the pain that a woman goes through. Yes, there are communities where a woman is considered impure when she is on periods. She is not allowed to enter the kitchen. At times, she is not even allowed to touch her kids. And this is not just about India. My personal experiences from my travel across the globe gave me some shocking insights. For example, in Japan, if a woman is on periods, she can't cook certain food. For example, sushi, one of the popular items in Japan, she can't cook it. In Afghanistan, if a woman is on period, she can't wash her genitals or she can't take a bath. And if she does that, she will become infertile. If you go to Nepal, a woman, a menstruating woman, is asked to stay in a cow shed in isolation. <laughs> the European Union, which has many countries having largest HDIs, the Human Development Index, 
they have 25% of the tax on sanitary napkins and tampoons. They are making sure that the women pay the complete amount. But trust me, people, when I talk to my friends, I always make this comment jokingly that if men had menstruation and periods, would this tampoon tax exist? I don't think so. This is the need of the hour that we all talk in one voice against this taboo. 113 million girls are about to drop out from school because they're about to have their first period. And this takes me back to the girl I met, Roshni, who was forced to leave school because she had periods. And this made me think that I need to do something. This is a state of emergency. And thus, was born an organization called Roshni as I decided to give up my engineering studies and work for the cause of menstruation. Yes, I'm an engineering dropout. Now I'm a student of law and gender, trying to reach out to people, trying to meet women from low-income communities and understand what is it actually to have periods. What are their vision? What is their perspective? How they feel? And there is a divide there as well. While we conduct activity-based learning sessions with young people where we try to revalue that menstruation is a natural and a biological process, we need to accept that. And this helped me to come up with a scientific, innovative technique using activity-based learning and theater to reach out to adolescent girls and talk about menstrual hygiene management in a way that they can relate to. When we started conducting our workshops, the whole idea was that we need to connect to the women from the low-income communities first, because I believe it is all about conditioning. And then I thought, we need to move a bit further. Of course, there were challenges. I remember people saying that this guy is unstable. People made fun of me. Many of my friends stopped talking to me. But this didn't discourage me. My family, my parents stood with me. And this is how my journey started. To end the stigma on menstruation. I believe it is a collective effort for all of us to talk about it. I'm sure many women and girls here might have experienced this. I meet a lot of women and girls who say that when I had my first period, I thought I had blood cancer. Have anyone experienced this? Many girls, till date, in low-income communities do not wear anything when they are on periods because they feel they will be cursed. So just imagine a woman or a girl who is having periods is sitting there without having a wash or without having a sanitary protection. Friends, menstruation has always been a taboo in our society. But I'm not able to understand something as simple as breathing. How can one keep it a secret? From both boys and girls, why does a girl have to wait till her first period to know more about it? This is a struggle, and at times I believe it is because of the majority of the population has decided to be ignorant. Yes, we all are silent, because we brush it up as a private woman's business. We are not concerned about it. But then, at the same time, I would urge to think about your mother and sister, and your wife, who, we, who goes through the situation. This is a struggle, as I said, where all people and all sections of the society need to come together and fight this taboo. The struggle needs the men to talk about menstruation. And only then, this age-old taboo will be abolished and we will be able to kill the taboo and eradicate all the myths and wrong ideas that are associated with menstruation. I want you all to repeat with me. Let's say it loud. P for periods. M for menstruation. Thank you.